traders. I hope you're enjoying your weekend. And we had an interesting week last week with the Fed Day being quite dovish. In other words, still postponing uh, at the moment the prospect of interest rate rises. And then, of course, we had the Scottish referendum vote, which went no. And so we came out of the week with some good weekly charts. So at the moment, we are with a risk on situation in these markets but I'm monitoring it very carefully as as usual we are at key levels and this is the Dow on the weekly chart so you can see we had a bearish close two weeks back a bullish close last week so I'm looking for a pullback to this 150 17,150 this was a key area of resistance on the previous two weeks and now we've closed above it so a pullback to 17,150 seems a natural place to get in might even come down to 17,000 but I'm looking for that to go to the top of that channel I'm looking for that to test 17 and a half that seems a logical place to take it as we're getting to next week uh, crucial data for the week coming up is as follows We've got Mr. Drahi president of the ECB speaking on Monday and then we have main thing is durable goods for the US on Thursday with weekly jobs and then US GDP on Friday. We're looking for a very good pick of GDP on Friday. So we might so hopefully what I would want is some weakness into the early part of the week, which we combine to and then finish on a good note as we get into GDP on Friday. Okay, so that's my plan for the week. Last week's plan didn't work out too well because we gapped down on the Sunday open and got heavily bought on the Monday. So what I was actually planning on this time last week went wrong but you can still be wrong and make money out of this market because if you look at that Monday close uh, as we talked about that you know, after we got that behind us then we can switch on to what the markets are doing and then get in on the trend and that's crucial to trading if you are if your analysis for whatever reason is wrong or slightly off track you can still make money as long as you're prepared to change your views in line with the price action in the market Okay, so we've got a uh, good close on the Dow. The Russell, the, mid, the smaller caps in the US, were weaker last week. That's three weeks lower closes, but there's on the 50% fibs. So let's see if that can do okay. And the Nikkei, very positive week, aggressive easing from the Bank of Japan. So Nikkei is responding to that. And the DAX, which I'm, I trade, the DAX is very nice and liquid. I prefer the DAX to the FTSE. Uh, there's much, much more liquidity and better chance for a decent moves. 80 is a, is a crucial line in the sand, which I think we can breach. If we come back to the daily on some of these charts, uh, I would want to see a pullback to this area here. I want to see a pullback down to um, Wednesday's high. This bar here is Wednesday's high. And then see if we can start to wind our way up to this 10,000. I think um, this is the impact of Mr. Drahi on Monday and some Euro data that's coming out the latter part of the week may well do that for us. I'll keep you posted on that one. Over to Forex, I just keep this to a very few Forex charts. The a tremendous few months, couple, two three months on this US dollar yen, I think we're going to be lucky to see, assuming this trend is going to stay intact, and we are very overbought, uh, we're going to be lucky to see, I think that was 8.30, which was the Fed day, a pullback after the Fed day, so this was the Fed day on Wednesday, markets like what um, the Fed had to say, what Janet Yellen had to say, and we've got the big move up, so I think uh, we are likely to see that. So 10770, 10750 will be a nice area. We, like I said, we are very extended. That, there's no such thing as overbought. This can stay up here for as long as this RSI can stay up there for as long as it likes. But at the moment, you just have to be very careful when you are trading extended charts. Let's have a look at the pound yen. Pound yen was fantastic. You see, we had a push into to above 180, my major target. So I have taken some lot of profits off the table on that one, and I would love to see 17, 
175, 170.540 pullback on that one. That is a reversal bar. The RSI has come off the highs. There's a nice weekly close. A drop up to the, wind up to the weekly bar here. Nice weekly close. So 175.20, 175 area would be a tremendous pullback to see if we can head for 190. If I put the fibs on, get rid of these marks. I put the fibs on this whole range right down to those the absolute low. You will see that hover around the 200, then we hover around this fib area. We ran up and pulled back, just under, tucked under this fib area and held it. And then we got the bullish consolidation, little dip. Which end, ended the consolidation, they found some volume and up we come. So that pullback could take us up to there, and that would be 184, roughly 184. Weekly is not overbought. We've got overbought here, here, and here, but we're currently not overbought. This time last year, we had this run up here. So let's see if we can get in on a pullback. That's the beauty of these markets. If you're not, if you haven't taken part in this run for whatever reason, um, there are always opportunities as you go down the line. So no need to uh, concern yourselves about that. Let's see if we can get in on that. Right, other markets. A quick look at the pound US. This is on the weekly chart. So we're struck between the 50 and the 200 EMA, which is always a struggle. We are just above a hammer. I did expect um, some potential. There's always a potential for a nice move. You get a hammer on a key pivot like that. We did close higher. I think we, whenever a chart gets between 50 and 200 in a, in a weekly or a daily like that, two to tend to get a lot of flux. So I, I think we might flap around here a little bit longer. Um, but with the Fed being dovish, I do think we can close. We can at least retest. 165 and we are just under 163. So back to the daily. I will personally just stick back, stick to the um, pound yen. But you can see on Friday we didn't engulf Thursday's um, vote bar. So if we can come back in and test 162 and hold, then we can um, get back up there. But all the time you're on the 50 and the 200 with a cross. This could just slam down, so be wary of that. And the euro is is obviously much more bearish. That looks if like a pullback to one two eight eighty could deliver a move down to one two seven fifty. So I am going to sit on my hands on Monday. I'm not entering the market on Monday. I will take a look at the the markets on the, on the latter half of the US session, but I will not be trading the UK set the Euro session. Uh, I'll just wait for these markets to come to me and set up. Uh, lovely move up here in the pound Aussie dollar, fantastic move. So pull back to 179.50 will be terrific. And we have got a reversal bar and a major area of resistance. We could just sit there may not even pull back, could just sit there, wait for the moving averages to cross and creep up, um, and do a little dip to the sort of 181 and then push up. But that is a reversal bar. All the time there's a reversal by the high RSI, this could just roll over. So I'll be sitting on my hands, waiting for the market to come to me and then see if the 180, 181 will hold. And that is it. I'm going to get in. Let's have a look at oil. We'll look at some commodities. We'll look at oil and gold. Gold is only 15 bucks off the 1200. So I am sitting put. I'm going to wait and see if that can come down to 1200. And if so, can that hold up? So you can see I've got 12 and 1300 bucks marked up on here. Once we failed 1300 up here and retested the moving averages and resistance, all pullbacks to the upside were sold into. So 
oil. I do think oil is due a move to the upside. This is a we're now in a November contract. The, con the volume was split between the two contracts. Whenever uh, the October contract comes to an end, there's always play between the October and November contract until the October finally ceases to exist. So you can see you've got a lot of price action, a lot of history around this area. If we can cluster around here, break above 1950 and hold 1950 plus, I think we could get higher. And so oil stocks have been beaten up, or some of them have. So I'm looking to see if some oil stocks and base around here. This is potentially a good time to buy oil. Weekly is what I call a stopping bar. If you don't know what I refer to as a stopping bar, it's an inverted hammer style. And if you join me at the Traders Round Table on Monday 7pm UK time or 2pm Eastern time in the afternoon, if you want a link to that, let me know. Email me, I'll give you one. And so you can join me for a free trial of that if you're not a member. Otherwise, I will leave that there. I will now go into the members video and the stock club video as well. All right. So, any comments, any feedback is welcome. Otherwise, look out for key events that are coming your way very soon. Thanks for joining me, and bye for now.